Mad Movie Mark, one of the Mad Movie Mark movie review, continuing my trek through the Rotten Tomatoes landscape. I am attempting to view and review all of the movies that have a 100% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes. That is the critics rating, not the audience rating. Uh, I am on my fourth movie in this uh, trek of 206. This is the 1925 silent movie, The Battleship Potemkin. Um, this movie, like I said, has 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. It has an 80% audience rating, which is pretty par for the course here. Uh, most of the movies that I've seen that have 100% critic rating so far have anywhere between a 90 and 93 audience rating. Uh, I haven't seen anything yet that has a lower than 80% audience rating. So these are pretty much movies that so far have been uh, highly acclaimed by critics and the audience. Um, these are anomalies. You don't always see this type of uh, agreeance with movies. So hopefully these are going to be some of the best movies ever made. I know the Battleship Potemkin is considered not only one of the greatest foreign language films ever made, but also considered one of the greatest films ever made, period. Uh, it's on every list of top uh, 100 movies of all time, except for AFI, of course, because AFI is only American movies. Uh, but it's on every list. It's considered a, um, you know, an important historical piece as well as a movie that, uh, especially one scene in the movie, uh, pretty much uh, is used throughout a lot of cinema. Uh, so it's historical and it's just important as a piece of art. Uh, this movie stars Alexander Anatov as uh, Vakulichuk and Vladimir Barsky as Commander Golikov. Uh, I apologize if I butchered those names. Uh, this is a silent film, so you never actually hear their names spoken. And I'm generally bad at pronouncing Russian names, which is why I could never get through the book um, Crime and Punishment. I tried, but there were too many characters for me to keep track of, and all the names kind of just ran together at some point. I just can't keep track of them. So I tried. I failed. I apologize if I butcher these names. Uh, I'm not trying to. It's not something that I'm doing um, out of hate or anything like that. I just have a really hard time with Russian names. Uh, so this movie is considered one of the first propaganda movies of all time. It's also considered one of the greatest propaganda movies of all time. Um, so let's get started. It's separated into five acts. I'm not going to uh, like kind of dissect things amongst each act. I'm just going to try to give a overview of what the movie is about and then kind of give my opinion slash uh, thoughts about the movie. So uh, the movie starts with uh, two sailors, Matt, Matt Lashinsko, Matt Lashinsko and <laughs> the Kulachuk. Uh, they're discussing the need for the uh, members of the crew of the Potemkin to join in the revolution that's going on in Russia. Um, we are then shown a scene where there's some officers who are inspecting the quarters of the of the other officers. So they're higher ranked officers inspecting the quarters where uh, the Kulichuk is sleeping. One of the officers stumbles and kind of takes it out, his aggression out on the lower ranked officer. This uh, wakens up the Kulichuk, sorry, who um, gives a rousing speech about how they need to join the revolution. At this point, he pretty be, he pretty much becomes the leader of this movement on the ship. Uh, he is the one that the crew looks up to. Uh, he is now the voice of the ship and of the revolution. Um, in the next scene after that, we are shown some officers who are getting ready to eat, uh, but they're refusing to eat because they say that the meat is of poor quality and that they are being uh, fed, fed basically less than what an animal or a dog would be fed. When they show a close-up of the meat, it does look like there's some kind of worms on it. Uh, they say that they are maggots. Uh, the higher ranked officers say that they're maggots and then kind of the uh, doctor comes out and looks at it and also says they're maggots and that they don't have to worry. They can just wash it off and the meat will be fine. Uh, I used to work at an animal hospital. I have seen, unfortunately, pets come in with maggots on them and it is not something you want to see. Uh, definitely not something that after you look at you want to eat anything that's on that, that, that meat. Uh, it's very disgusting. Uh, it is very bad. And I could tell you firsthand that if I saw that on a piece of meat, 
uh, I would not agree to wash it off and eat it. Uh, so this is partly where the mutiny comes from. The crew has had enough. They're tired of uh, the aggression being taken out on them. They're tired of the poor quality of food that they have to eat. So they do decide uh, two stage kind of a hunger strike of sorts where they just refuse to eat uh, the meat or anything that's really offered to them. Uh, to treat them as an example, they are uh, the higher ranked officers take everyone out onto like the front of the ship. They take a section of the uh, crew that refuse to eat the meat and they put sort of this tarp over them. They bring in the firing squad and they kind of say like these are going to be an example. Uh, if you don't do what you're told, we are not going to allow a mutiny on the ship. Um, we are going to take care of any one who uh, tries to rise up against us. So the firing squad comes out of the ship and they refuse to fire. They decide to take the side of the crew and they decide to have kind of a, a mutiny on the ship at that point where they're uh, fighting the higher ranked officers or throwing them over the ships. Uh, this is a big kind of a battle scene um, on the ship. And then eventually they win, but unfortunately um, Val Kulinchuk uh, perishes in this fight. So he was, like I said, he was the voice, he was the heart of this movement um, and he ends up being killed. So what they do is they bring the boat ashore to Odessa. They bring his body onto the shore. They kind of lay out his body on the land and they um, display him as a martyr. Uh, and they basically have a sign that he was killed over soup uh, because he refused to eat the food that was given to him and the, the food was of poor quality. Uh, the people from Odessa, uh, this town, start hearing this tale, this rumor of a ship that launched a mutiny um, and that is going to try to take, um, take sides in this revolution and is going to rise up and be part of the revolution. So the people of Odessa start pouring in um, from the land to the shore. Uh, there's this huge uh, staircase that uh, pretty much seems like it goes on forever where it just shows uh, people lined up. Um, it looks like by the thousands trying to uh, meet this boat. You have people going onto boats, uh, trying to uh, just do whatever they can to show support. These people have their own boats. They jump on the boats. Um, just to say that they are behind this mutiny and they're behind this revolution. Uh, you then are shown at the top of the stairs, there's kind of a brigade of officers who uh, are not in the mutiny, but on kind of the other side or on the, I guess the side of uh, Russia, I think. Uh, but they, um, they get wind that this is happening and they want to stop this mutiny. They want to stop the people from rising up. Um, they don't want this to be a thing. So they actually start firing their weapons uh, onto the people on the stairs. So they're walking down the stairs and they're basically shooting anyone and everyone they can see. Uh, there is a lady with her son who is very ill. She uh, goes up to the officers and says, please don't shoot us. My son is ill. We need help. And the officers end up shooting them. Um, basically, without mercy, they just are shooting everyone to try to curtail this mutiny. And um, there's even a scene where there is a, uh, a mother gets shot and her, her baby carriage starts like falling down the stairs. Kind of uh, like you've probably, I'm sure you've seen in uh, other movies. Um, so after this massacre, the crew of the uh, Potemkin are still on the ship. Uh, they see what's going on and they decide that they're going to, there's a uh, fleet of enemy ships out uh, in the distance that are coming towards them. Uh, so they decide they're going to kind of do this suicide run where they're going to uh, fight for their cause and they're going to head towards the ship. They're going to take on this fleet of ships by themselves and they're going to, uh, you know, try to now be the face of this revolution to show that they need to fight for their rights and to show that they need to fight for what they believe is right for themselves. So they start heading towards this fleet of ships and there's a very tense situation where uh, you don't know who's going to fire on who first are either going to fire on each other, uh, who's going to draw first blood, uh, the cavalcade of ships 
or the single ship. Uh, eventually, neither one of them fire on each other. The uh, sort of the group of other ships that are coming towards the Potemkin uh, decide that they are going to show solidarity toward the movement. And uh, that's kind of how the movie ends. So um, I, I enjoyed this movie. I thought it was a, a really good action movie. So far, I haven't seen a lot of action in the black and white movies that I've watched. Um, definitely, there's definitely more people in this movie. They do a lot more with extras in this movie than I've ever seen before. And uh, the battle scenes are really great. Uh, the ship firing the cannons is very realistic. I'm not sure if they used a real ship or not or what they used. Uh, but the battle scenes and everything looks fantastic. Um, the cinematography is very well done on this. And then the scene where the uh, baby stroller is falling down the stairs, clearly that was redone in uh, The Untouchables. I didn't know that that was actually taken from something else. Uh, it's, it's really cool when you see a movie like that um, and then you see the movie that it came from where you can put those two together and, and realize that, uh, you know, these older movies are ahead of their time and they are using techniques that are going to be done later on and that other movies are going to think are so important that they want to borrow from that. Um, the, the subject material, I think, in this movie is also what makes it uh, really famous and really important. Uh, it's one. I think it's one of the first movies that show kind of a mutiny and show how uh, these sailors are treated and how people uh, who are treated poorly uh, should rise up against the their aggressors or uh, the people that are treating them badly. Uh, so the subject matter where you're rising up and you're defending yourself and even the martyr situation where the guy dies for his country and dies for what he believes in. Um, I think that's probably one of the first times this was set to film. So it's uh, very important in that aspect. Uh, as far as the movie goes, I, I really enjoyed pretty much uh, everything after see, uh, from scene three and scene four, I, or act three and act four, I think, and act five are probably the best parts of this movie. The first couple acts to me were a little slow. Um, the part with the meat and the parts where the crew is being treated poorly. Um, I thought the pacing was a little slow on it, but that's just, I mean, that's just me personally. Uh, I feel weird uh, critiquing this movie at all because of how important and how famous and how popular in history it actually is. Uh, but watching it today, I can understand all that. I can appreciate that. Uh, but I can't say the first two acts for me uh, were a little slow and I wasn't really into it that much. I will say that the movie did not uh, really bring me into it and keep my attention fully at first. It was only after the scene where the uh, crew is going to be fired on by the firing squad and then it's, it doesn't happen and they start fighting and things start, the action starts happening that I really am into this movie. Um, so with that being said, I, the acting is good. Although the problem with uh, trying to judge this on acting merit is that you're, the main character who is the martyr of this movie, uh, he dies pretty early on. And you, I don't really remember that there was another actor that really took his place as kind of the driving force in the movie. After that, it was the material and the uh, action scenes that really drove the movie. So... The acting is, is really great, but after the first couple acts, uh, you're really just looking at action and you're looking at story. Uh, so this movie, um, I can see why it's considered one of the greatest movies of, of all time, especially if you just take into account the stroller scene um, that was used throughout Hollywood numerous times. I personally would give this movie an 8 out of 10. Uh, for me... I'm not always about the subject material, especially since the subject material is so old. Uh, I'm not as much about the subject material in this movie as I am about the action and what's going on besides the subject material. And to be honest, I've seen so far better silent films uh, where I enjoy the subject material more. So maybe it just doesn't work for me as much as it works for everyone else. Uh, but I can still appreciate what it does and I can appreciate how good it is. Uh, and I would give it an 8 out of 10. So thank you. Uh, please join me next time. I believe the next movie I am going to be doing 
is Gold Rush. So thank you. I hope you have a good day.